Good evening, everyone. I'd like to first start by acknowledging that I'm coming to you from Toronto, uh, which is on the treaty lands of the Mississaugas of the Credit and the traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee, the Wendat, and the Anishinaabe. I'm very excited to be here tonight and um, very thankful to Plenty Canada for inviting me to be part of, of the session. I very, feel very privileged. And also thank you to um, each one of you who's joining. Very excited to be sharing my story. Um, uh, with creating ethical space and my perspective um, as a non-Indigenous person who was uh, had the opportunity to be a part of the Healing Place project, which Joanna mentioned um, earlier. And I'm sure most of you are aware of the Healing Place. I think this program actually kicked off at the Healing Place, but um, it was the site of the Reconciliation and Climate Change tree planting event. Um, that was, it's more than just an event, I think, but really um, a really inspiring initiative. So I just want to tell my story about being part of that. And, um, and in all honesty, I mean, as Larry knows, it was a bit of a bumpy road at the beginning. And that's kind of where maybe talking about the failures of ethical space come in. But I think in the end, uh, we created something very powerful. And that's where the successes come in. So I'd like to tell that story. Um, and at the time, as Joanna mentioned, I was working at a not-for-profit organization called Forests Ontario. And we were really focused on tree planting and forest education. One of our flagship programs was called the Community Tree Plant Program. And we worked with local um, tree planting organizations like municipalities and conservation authorities to get community members together and plant trees in local green spaces. So when I was at Forest Ontario, we also got funding for a reconciliation community tree plant program, which in some ways was similar but in many ways was very, very different because we were working with Indigenous partners and um, really the main impetus was uh, planting for reconciliation. And I think probably the first phone call that our CEO made when we found out that we got this funding was to Larry um, to talk about tree planting and see if he wanted to work together. And the timing ended up being um, pretty perfect, I would say, because I know Larry and some of his partners were talking about doing a reconciliation and climate change planting event. Um, so we were very excited to be part of that. Um, and from there, we began working together, as Joanna mentioned, at the Eastern Ontario First Nation Working Group, and then um, kind of as another group uh, just dedicated to the event. So from our perspective as Forest Ontario, things were going um, pretty well. Things were going down a track towards a successful event. I think that we had um, met several times. We had picked um, a planting date. We had been talking about significant, uh, culturally significant species to plant. And from our perspective, things were kind of going to plan um, until it became very clear in one of the meetings that um, some of our partners felt that our, our focus had kind of shifted from reconciliation. And it was mentioned that it was kind of asked if we could step back and take a second and just realize that this was an event really for indigenous peoples and centered around reconciliation. So after that comment, um, it got a little quiet when the meeting ended. Um, and from our perspective, we were, we were obviously uncomfortable. We, we felt upset and we were trying to figure out, we knew we had done something. We knew we had said something wrong. And we kind of sat with that for a bit. And it really didn't take too much time to realize that we have been approaching this initiative with a very Western viewpoint. And we had been kind of treating it just like a regular community tree plant in many ways. And that was not the case for this. Um, and while it was not our intent, that was definitely the impact. And uh, in doing so, we weren't being great partners and we were not cultivating ethical space. So as Larry likes to call it, we hit the reset button. And the next meeting that we had, we discussed the issues that were going on and we decided to form kind of a smaller working group within the larger planning group to discuss the event, but also concepts like ethical space and how to create ethical space and reconciliation and, and really work on, on getting that relationship together. So from there, we formed a smaller group, which I don't think it was much smaller than the planning group, to be honest, because I think everybody really wanted to be a part um, of the discussion. And I feel like every time that we met, 
we kind of kept bringing new partners in because the the event and the initiative um, just turned into something wonderful that everyone wanted to be a part of. Um, so in those first few smaller working group sessions, um, Larry and our other Indigenous partners really talked about reconciliation. We had a, a few roundtable discussions about what reconciliation actually meant to the different partners. We talked about ethical space and, and the history of ethical space with First Nations. And we talked about how it relates to environmental stewardship and how we could bring it into our group and cultivate it. And from there, we formed a governance um, that really laid out our shared vision together and also just got us kind of on the same page as equal partners um, and really helped us foster that idea of ethical space and put it into practice. And of course, we talked about the event at these events um, or at these meetings, I should say. Um, but we also talked about beyond just the planting date and, and the possibilities that there were for education and for expanding the network. Um, so the end result of, of this was a successful and deeply thoughtful event. Uh, I was deeply intentional and I think it was very moving. I was not able to be there due to COVID, but I was following along on the Facebook live stream and just the lead up was, was amazing. And I think we also formed a very trusting relationship. And I think in the end, we formed something that's impact became greater than the sum of all of its parts and continues to grow today. So I'm extremely grateful to have been part of this, even though it was uncomfortable and difficult at times. Um, I learned a lot personally, some things that I still apply today, even in my, in my work with, with um, non-Indigenous partners actually too. So I believe our impact um, in some ways was amplified by this bumpy road. I think that it tells, it helps tell a story that's very real um, and, and probably happens quite a bit. But I want to leave you with some learnings that I've taken away from this experience to create ethical space so that you don't necessarily have to go down the same bumpy road that, that we went down. So the first thing I would say is be aware of everyone's vision and everyone's ideas of success before you start anything. Um, from our organizational perspective, I would say that our idea of success was kind of narrow. It was a bit tied to our funding that we had. It was very much an output. It was you know, such and such an event by such and such a day. And that wasn't um, the shared vision with the group, nor should it have been. And I think that was really um, where the problem started. So I would just really try and go in and, and learn what everyone's vision is. The second thing I would say about creating ethical space that's so important um, is to focus number one on the relationship. I would say put aside the deliverables and the deadlines and, and all of that and just really focus on getting to know your partners and building trust with them because at the end of the day the impact of whatever you're working towards is it's really pivotal on on that relationship so that should be the number one priority i would say to also create or at least discuss some form of governance such as what we did in the healing place um, it just helps cement the vision and really set the tone for mutual respect and how you're gonna incorporate the different ways of knowing and, and the different ways of seeing the world. And like I said, I still use some of the teachings today and, and just the, the ideas of the things that were in the governance, I think is such a great way to approach partnerships, even if only you know in, in your mind before a meeting, just to take a moment and recognize the different gifts that all the partners bring and just be very appreciative and just respect everyone um, despite the differences of perspective or maybe because of the differences of perspective. Another thing I would say that I wish that I had done a little bit more before um, working on The Healing Place, which all of you are doing tonight is, is do your homework and prepare yourself. Because when you don't do your homework, um, the burden ends up falling on the shoulders of your Indigenous partners. So like I mentioned, when we kind of hit the reset button and formed our smaller group, Larry and our partners spent a lot of time and effort educating us on ethical space and reconciliation and the history of the First Nations in the area. And looking back, I'm very thankful for that, but I wish that that wasn't the case and that we had come in better prepared. And there's lots of different 
courses and programs that you can take like like what you're doing today. So I would just urge you to, to continue educating yourself and preparing yourself. Um, another thing I would say is actually something that Martina mentioned in our planning meeting um, that really stuck out to me because it kind of gave um, words to a sentiment that I had been feeling throughout this process and that's get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Um, I feel like as non-Indigenous people, as white people, we've really been comfortable for a very long time and it's, it's okay to be uncomfortable. And not to be cliche, but when you're not, um, when you're not uncomfortable, you're not growing and the partnership's probably not growing. Um, so it can be hard to learn how to see the world in a different way. And it can be really hard to come face to face with your own privilege, but just sit with your discomfort. And in those moments, I would just urge you to be authentic um, and sit back and give people space if that's what you feel. And, and if you have something to say from the heart, then say it from the heart. But um, I would urge you in those moments to, to sit with it and be authentic. And I guess the last thing I would say is just to have an open mind. Um, there's truly no limit to what you can achieve when all the partners have an open mind. And when you are respectful of the different resources and skills and perspectives that the different partners bring to the table. Um, so those are really my big learnings and I hope that they can help you know, at least one person out there when creating ethical space because the impact from our, our, part, our project that we worked on was just it's so expansive and honestly, it's still going. And that was because we had a bumpy road, but we hit reset and, and I think we made something really beautiful. Um, so thank you so much for listening to my words, and I'm really looking forward to discussing um, more later this evening. But with that, I'll, I'll pass it over to either Larry or Pam.